Let's figure out what is the work done by the force of a spring. So here's our setup. We have a spring at its relaxed length. That means it's not stretched or compressed. And we call that uh, x equals zero. And the spring is not exerting a force on the block yet. Now, if we were to pull the block to the right, now we're stretching the spring. And we know that the spring will want to try to pull the block back to the left. So our displacement of the block is to the right. And the force from the spring on the block is to the left. And if I compress the spring, now the displacement is to the left of the block, but the force from the spring on the block is to the right. In other words, the force from the spring is always opposite to the displacement. So that's what this negative sign here in Hooke's Law means, that the, the direction of the force is going to be opposite to the displacement. If the uh, block goes to the left, the force on the block from the spring is to the right, and vice versa. Previously, we defined the work done by a force as the product of the force in the distance if they're in the same direction, or the dot product of the force in the displacement if they are not uh, quite in the same direction, if there is an angle between them. But we had a stipulation that the work is equal to that only if the force is a constant force. We see here from Hooke's Law that the more we stretch the spring, the more the force is. The force is changing. It is not constant. So how do we calculate the work done by the spring force when it is not constant? Here's our solution. Let's uh, take the amount that we stretch the spring from the relaxed position at zero out to stretch x, and let's divide that uh, segment up into n pieces. So we have n segments making up the distance from 0 to x, and each segment is delta x wide. If we let that delta x distance be very small, then the change in force is very, also very small, and we can assume that very small region to have a a nearly constant force. So we can use the equation force times distance for each segment, and then the total amount of work is the sum of all the works done through every segment. So we can write it this way. The work done by the spring is the sum of the force in each little segment times the width of each, or the distance of each little segment. And the work, of course, is negative because the force from the spring is opposite to the displacement. In this example here, the force of the spring is to the left, and the displacement is to the right. This right here is called a Riemann sum from what you learn in calculus, and it is the definition of a definite integral, which is written this way, that says the work done by the spring is the sum of all the force times distance starting at position x initial and ending at position x final. These, of course, are called the limits of our integration. We know that the magnitude of the force from Hooke's law is equal to kx, so we'll substitute f with kx. And negative k is a constant, so we'll pull it outside of the integral sign. And the integral of x with respect to x is 1 half x squared. And we come up with this expression here, negative 1 half k times quantity x final squared minus x initial squared. But when we multiply this negative sign through the parentheses, we come up with our final equation for work done by a spring, 1 half kx initial squared minus 1 half kx final squared. And be very careful, we're used to seeing in uh, almost everything we do, like change in kinetic energy or change in position or change in anything, we're always used to seeing the final minus the initial. So be very careful. Here you notice the work done by the spring is the initial minus the final. So don't make that common mistake and get those mixed up. As we saw with work done by gravity, if an object starts at rest, and ends at rest, then its change in kinetic energy is zero. And we know from the work kinetic energy theorem that the net work 
is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So if the change in kinetic energy is zero, the net work is zero. And that means the sum of the for of the work done by the applied force and the spring force add to zero. In other words, they are equal in magnitude and opposite in sign. Be careful though, if the block is not stationary before and after, after the displacement, then this statement is not true. It is worthy to note though, that it also can be true if it starts and ends at the same velocity. As long as the change in kinetic energy is zero, then this statement is true here. Now, a common mistake that students make uh, is not realizing that this term here, one-half kx initial squared minus one-half kx final squared, that is not the same as one-half k times x initial minus x final quantity squared. Let's go through an example and show you a common mistake that many students make. Let's calculate the work done by a spring with a given spring constant if it contracts from one distance to another, where in both cases, the amount of contraction is seven centimeters. In uh, example A, it contracts from 10 centimeters to three centimeters. And in example B, it contracts from 20, 20 centimeters to 13 centimeters. The common mistake that kids make is they'll do it this way down here at the bottom, where they'll say, the difference between 20 and 13 is 7 centimeters, so let me square that and then multiply that by 1 half k. So 1 half k x squared. That is not correct. The only time that would be correct is if it's contracted from 7 centimeters to 0 centimeters. To do it correctly, we have a different answer for each of these two examples. For the first example, the initial position is 0.1 meter and the final position is 0 0.03 meters, so we have to x initial squared minus x final squared, and our answer then is 0 0.91 joules for example A, and for example B, we see that the answer is 2.31 joules, making sure that we square the number first and then take the difference. Don't take the difference first and then square it. That is incorrect. So let's take a look at an example with a graph that represents the spring force. So here's our graph. We have force on the y-axis and stretch on the x-axis. And we see that when we have a positive stretch, the force is in the negative direction. And when we have a negative compression, the force is in the positive direction. So our work done by the spring is the sum of all the tiny little pieces uh, force times displacement, and we showed that that equals to one-half kx initial squared minus one-half kx final squared. Let's look at an example now with some numbers. Let's just choose some numbers for the k constant of the spring, 50 newtons per meter, and the initial and final positions will be plus or minus uh, 10 and 20 centimeters, respectively. So that means when we compress the spring, we're compressing it from the initial position to the final position, which is to the left. But when we stretch the spring from the initial position to the final position, it is to the right. So here's the math for both uh, compressing it to the left and stretching it to the right. And we see that in both examples, we get negative work done by the spring, even though the compression is to the left and the stretch is to the right. One thing we do notice though, is that in both cases, the spring was moved further away from the equilibrium point. So when the spring is moved further away from the equilibrium point, the work done is negative. And we see that if we switched these numbers so that it moved from further away to closer, the work done by the spring would be positive. So in other words, when this uh, displacement is further away from the equilibrium point, the work done by the spring is negative. And when the displacement is closer, ends up closer to the equilibrium point, then the work done by the spring is positive.
Here's another example where the spring starts off at a compression of eight centimeters to the left and then moves to a compression of three centimeters. And how much work is done? Well, we can calculate that. One half kx initial squared minus one half kx final squared. And we see that for the time when a spring moves closer to the equilibrium position, the work done by the spring is positive. In this case, 0.1375 joules. What if we let the spring move all the way past the equilibrium point to a stretch of plus three centimeters? And when we do the calculation again, starting at compression of negative eight and ending up at a stretch of positive three, we see that we get the same answer. And you'll notice what happened. It doesn't matter if these terms are plus or minus. When you square them, you get the same number. So it doesn't matter if you started off with a plus or a minus. You're going to get the same number either way. So what is this saying? Well, if we think about what's happening, there's a certain amount of positive work from negative 8 to 0. And then there's negative work from 0 to positive 3. And the amount of negative work from 0 to positive 3 is the same amount as positive work from negative 3 to 0. So th the work done in this region uh, is just a wash. It cancels each other out, and the net work, the work that we're left over with, is the same as the work that we saw going from negative 8 to negative 3. So looking at these four examples here, we see we can make a, a general rule that says if the initial position, the magnitude of the initial position is greater than the magnitude of the final position, then we have positive work done by the spring. And if the magnitude of the initial position is less than the magnitude of the final position, we have negative work done. In other words, if it ends up closer to the equilibrium point, it's positive work. And if it ends up further away from the equilibrium point, we have negative work. And here are the calculations to show that here, 3 is closer uh, than 8, and so we have positive work, and uh, 8 is further away than 3, so we have negative work.